Okay, today I was reviewing um, variants of annuities, and I thought that I would go over that with you and share a few problems. First of all, I would like to note that these are some of the formulas that I have found for variants of annuities, and I'm confident that you do not have to memorize any of these formulas. I really don't think you have to remember them at all. If you understand what's going on, you should be able to come up with them on your own if you know how annuities are related to insurances, etc. So let's just erase all these and forget about them because they look quite stressful. So um, I'll just do one problem in this video so it doesn't get too long and then I'll record a couple others. Um, this is a problem from a previous exam. Let's see. They tell us that for a continuous whole life annuity of 1 on x, okay, so you know that that's going to be little a bar x, just like that. They tell us that t of x is the future lifetime random variable for x. No surprise there, it always is. Um, that the force of interest and the force of mortality are constant and that they're also equal to each other. That's certainly going to be helpful. And that a bar x, where the actuarial present value of a continuous whole life annuity on x is 12.5. And they want us to find the standard deviation of the true present value of this annuity, the continuous annuity, continuous whole life annuity on x. So, First of all, let's talk a little bit about this, okay? Um, we know that this a bar of x is the actuarial present value. So what is this a bar of the future lifetime of x? That's going to be the true present value. Um, so can we ever know exactly what that is? No, okay? We don't know what t of x is. We don't know exactly when this person is going to die. If we did, then we could tell you for how long are they going to receive these payments or make these payments. We could tell you the true present value, which is what this is representing. Since we don't know that, we're going to do things like take the expected value of it, of the true present value of this annuity, and that's what our a bar x is, the actuarial present value. It's the expected value of this. So what we're going to need to do in this problem is we're going to need to, in order to get the standard deviation, we'll need to find the variance of this. So let's do that. And I'm going to work all the way through it so you can see that you wouldn't need to use a formula that you had memorized and plug stuff in. I mean, it's way better to just work it out and derive it. And once you've done it a few times, it'll get faster. So we want the variance of the true present value of a continuous whole life annuity on x. OK, so you know, let's say, for example, you know that an insurance is one month, or I'm sorry, you know that an annuity is one minus the corresponding insurance over, you know, here it would be delta since it's continuous. If it's discrete, it would be, um, if it's a discrete annuity due, it would be D, etc. Um, this should look very familiar. You know this is true. Okay, the same is going to be true if you're looking at the true value of this insurance. Of course, that makes sense. True value of this annuity, sorry. So the variance of the true value of this continuous whole life annuity, this is the same thing as saying the variance of 1 minus the corresponding insurance over delta. Delta because it's continuous. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and break this up. This is the same thing as the variance of 1 over delta minus the true present value of a continuous 
insurance on X over delta. Okay, the variance of a constant is zero. So we have this is zero plus. Um, I'm going to pull out this negative one over delta. And we know that that will get squared, right? Because the variance of ax, for example, if a is a constant and x is a variable, is a squared times the variance of x. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just pulling out this constant and I'm squaring it. And actually, this is really a negative. You square it, it becomes positive, but I'm pulling out a negative 1 over delta. And then our variable here is this insurance. So 0 plus negative 1 over delta squared, the constant squared, times the variance of the random variable, the variance of this insurance. Okay, we know that the variance of a random variable is its second moment minus the square of its expected value. Okay, and it's no different for this. Um, the variance of this insurance is going to be at second moment, which is written like that, minus its expected value. Just like we said, the expected value of this annuity, the true, we said the expected value of the true value, the true present value of this continuous annuity would be our actuarial present value. We're doing the same kind of thing here. The expected value of um, the true present value of this continuous insurance is its actuarial present value. Okay, so the second moment minus the expected value squared. That's the variance. And then we have over delta squared from when we pulled out that constant and squared it. Okay, um, let me erase this. So this is what we're looking for. This is the variance of the true present value of a continuous whole life annuity of 1 on x. Okay? Um, let's come back to this. We know that the actuarial present value of this annuity is 12.5. Since mu is continuous, I'm going to go ahead and write this out. We know that if mu is continuous, the actuarial present value of a continuous whole life annuity is 1 over mu plus delta. We also know that mu and delta are equal. So when you solve for either one, you're going to get that mu equals delta equals 0 0.04. Okay, beautiful. And then what we really need is the actuarial present value of a continuous whole life insurance of 1 on x, which if mu or the force of mortality is continuous, equals mu over mu plus delta. Force of mortality over the force of mortality plus the force of interest. Okay, and here this is 0 0.04 over 0 0.04 plus 0 0.04, which is 1 half. Okay, for the second moment, I'll put that in here. Uh, yeah, second moment minus will have this actuarial present value is going to be 1 half. For the second moment of this insurance, um, you can calculate it the same way as the expected value, only you double the force of interest um, to get the second moment. 
One thing to be careful of is if they give you, for example, I or D, make sure if you're looking for the second moment, you don't just double I or double D. You're always doubling the force of interest. So, you know, solve for the force of interest and double that or however you need to go about it. Um, but you don't just double whatever interest rate they give you. So this is going to be force of mortality over the force of mortality plus twice the force of interest, which is one third. I hope you can see all of this. And then, okay, I'll put that in here. That was our second moment, one third over delta squared. And delta is 0 0.04. So when I worked that out, I got that the variance for our annuity was. Um, 52.0833, but they asked for the standard deviation, so the square root of the variance is 7.2169. All right. That's it for that problem, and I will record a couple more. Thanks for watching, and happy studying.